7.1 is live and it brings story, dailies, and operation, and a bunch of feature updates. We're going to talk about all that and more on this episode of the Sword Tour Escape podcast from NewOverlords.com. Our broadcast astromech today is EPC 434. And with me is my co host, Seema. Hey, Seema, how's it going? Hey, Max. Hey, chat room. Hey, everybody. It's going great. It's kind of it's kind of exciting to have seven dot one actually here. It just is just because we've been we've been anticipating it for a while. So, um, what I did was I played the story. I haven't done the dailies yet. Um, and oh, I mean, we're gonna you're, you're gonna say this when we get to events, but Max, nightlife has begun. It it has begun, and it's not over yet. It is. I didn't expect it to be over yet. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we never expect it to be we, over. <laughs> we never expect it to be over. Have you visited a casino yet? I have not, but I've been. I. Maybe by I've the end in... of this, maybe by the end of the night, we'll end up in the casino. And here's why. Because I've been standing in my stronghold looking at my gear. <laughs> yeah. Right. And my the stronghold that I use the most is my Nar Shada one. So I have to say I am very I love it when nightlife is on because all of the Nar Shada chat is about nightlife stuff, and it's people saying, um, you know, oh I didn't get the thing I wanted, or oh I got twenty of this thing, or, or someone say at, at one point someone said, yay my tenth speeder, <laughs> <laughs> and someone said, grats. <laughs> So anyway, that's kind of neither here nor there. But so I've heard a lot of the nightlife stuff. That's that's right. how I can tell you that it's it's gone. It's it's happening. It's it's real. Um, but also this week in our guild AIE, AIE, we've been doing our summer of love, which is something we do every year, and it's a string. It's basically we do a special event in each of the games where we have a presence. So we had our special night during MFN this week and BC took us basically we went from planet to planet in story order and we just kind of shared what we remembered about that planet or what's something remarkable that happened on that planet or what what's our favorite memory from that planet um, and then we ended up back at the our Rishi, Rishi our guild headquarters on Rishi where Corley had set up like decorations on the beach and everything and put, he had put some uh, guild banks down there and everyone got to choose some prizes out of the guild bank. And it was a, it was a really fun, chill evening. Yeah. It was a fun twist. Yeah. We've always yeah. done. So the way it works in all the games is we, first we talk in, in discord. We do, we talk about the origin story of the remembrance day itself. We talk about some people, that we've lost everybody gets a chance to sort of go around and we had like 50 people at least uh that were that were all there and in, in discord and people typing notes and in, in chat really really uh great great process and then in each of the games where we've got a gathering of players there's usually some sort of like march or procession or memorial hangout and in world of warcraft where it all started it was a, a march from the the what is it called? The, the It's called the Shrine of the Fallen Warrior in the Barrens. Shrine of the Fallen Warrior in the Barrens. And then you do a march. And this year, the march that march changed a little bit because we have Alliance and Horde that can now group up in an ops group together. Uh, yeah. So that ended up going down to uh, Ratchet and then sailed a ship to Booty Bay and had drinks because we celebrate by the end of the night. Uh, in Star Wars, what we've usually done is we've done it in on Alderaan, looking over the Duran Mountains um, off into the distance. That's where we sort of gather. And then we've done just kind of a, a random walk while the, the WoW walk has been going on. BC had this idea to do the, the tour on the guild ship of the planets, as, as Seema just described, which turned out great because everybody could just sort of like say a little bit about, you know, you know, as we've been talking throughout the night, just say anything they want, but then, you know, memories of, playing the game or you know, all, we went through all the planets in story order. So like remembering back to 10 years ago, what, what it was like. And um, then, yeah, ended up on the beach and uh, I had stripped off all my clothes immediately. And <laughs> hung out on the beach. Again. As one does. I'll have to pull up those pictures because uh, 
I, I realized again that I am ripped in game. <laughs> in game. Yeah, so that was great. So that was MFN and Summer of Love. And then on our ops team, we went in to see the new operation tonight, which we had done on the PTS, but this was, you know, in the live game. And we um, we had some, we had success with it. I think we probably could have gotten him down, except that he, we were experiencing an error condition where he would basically, uh, you know, he'd fall through the floor and then we could no longer fight him. So right. that was kind of a stopper. Yeah, every every time we, we wiped and we tried to restart the fight, we'd have to... He'd, we'd have to, yeah, go back to med center or... We didn't have to clear the trash again, the but everybody, everybody had yeah. to exit the, the operation and go to, go to med center or he would... And that didn't even was. always reset him properly. So it was... Yeah. So we didn't get nearly as many... Attempts, attempts on them right yeah um but but you know it that that fight is definitely a dance and i i feel that once we get the dance down it's going to be very repeatable yep um so yeah those are oh so i and so i i did give some thought to my gear today i hadn't really been thinking about it in the weeks leading up to i know people have been talking about gear a lot and what I finally decided to do is upgrade an implant, but then not upgrade any of my ops gear or my flashpoint gear until I just get some more of it. Because, well, the flashpoint gear, I don't have enough currency. The ops gear, I have, I have enough currency, but I'm not sure the gear I have is what I want to upgrade. So right. we'll see what happens. So in the end, after thinking about it for a long time and being kind of a gearing fog, the answer for me today was just, oh, okay, I'll upgrade my implant, which is kind of a no-brainer. Yeah. <laughs> could I, I could have done that and not thought about it. <laughs> but anyway, that's where I am on my gearing thoughts today. And now, Max, how has your week been? It has been good, good, good as well. Thanks for asking. It, I, so what did I say last week? Uh, the first thing I was going to do is look at gear. It's not the mm -hmm. first thing I did. Uh, instead, I played the story because people were talking about the story, and I played mm -hmm. through the story very first thing. We're not going to spoil the sport story tonight. We'll do a we'll do an episode probably uh, next week uh, where we talk about the the dailies in detail. We're going to sort of like do the do the high level overview of everything tonight, but so we won't spoil the story. But yeah, first thing I did the story because I wanted to. I just got really curious on Tuesday. I wanted to hear from uh, from Malgus because we got that little clip in the live stream where where it sounded like we were going to hear something. I, I mean, was to get that is. It. Did I say that? Because that's the first thing I did. Yeah. No. Well, yeah. I did no, a story. Yeah. Because like to me, like when you log in and that button is there, that's how you know there's right. there's new content, right? I mean, there's a new patch. It's here. So yeah, I did that first. Right. And I I liked having that option to do that, the button popping up right there, clicking that, going through it, and, and doing it. So that was good to see. I did all of the dailies on Manon. So there was a little bit of story there. I only did it on the yeah, outside. Uh, but I did all of the dailies at the same time of doing the story. And there's some elements of that that I really liked. Although now that we're back here, I don't... See, I was thinking, so when you talk to the Gand, who's the Imperial guy, Captain, or, you know, Lieutenant Quark, or whatever his name is, mm -hmm. as you're playing through that part, story story aside, he, he gives you, you're collecting some components, and he gives you an extra action bar, basically, and you sort of build it along the way, and you get to choose one of two things three different times, and you build out the extra action bar. I was expecting, and now I don't see it, I was expecting we would be able to have that extra action bar permanently. But I do not have it with me now, and that's disappointing. I am quite disappointed. I was expecting every time we came back to Manon, in fact, they should do that. Why Why? Why did they not? We only got it for that, for that story, so you could only use those abilities like three times? I hope not. Because one of them, out of the third choice, was you could choose 
to get stealth, basically. You get a stealth ability, you, you get to be stealth, and I don't have a stealth spec as a secondary spec on this character. So you could like stealth through and like do a bunch of the dailies as, you know, as like oh, having stealth yeah. as an extra action, um, which was great. So the, the one I was doing the dailies as I went along, the one daily I had left to do when I got to that point in the story and I got the stealth ability, I was able to do, you had to like click on eight different of these generators with, and it was a heroic too. So there was elite mobs around them. I was able to do uh, like six or seven of them uh, w without having to fight anything because I had stealth. So that was great. Uh, there was the heroic four. And so somebody just uh, tried to start a group for that. In general, I seen here heroic four cutting off the head. I tried to solo that and I wiped, I died like two or three times. Um, I got him down to like 15%. Um, but the ads, you get waves of six, six ads and they keep uh, respawning and running in throughout the whole fight, six at a time, three ranged and three melee. And I ended up getting overwhelmed. I think with a little more practice and clever use of the heal stations, I could probably solo that because I was feeling pretty good about it. I got him down to 50%, 15%. Um, yeah, that's very good. And close. that was without, before I had upgraded anything. Because then the next thing I did, as, as you said as well, I looked at all the upgrading. The thing I haven't researched too much, although I, Medulla gave us a bunch of notes and I need to explore it a bit more, is what's up with the mods. I don't think the mods are going to be all of that, all that interesting for your primary upgrade path, especially for your main character. They may be quite interesting for your alts. So it's, we'll set that aside and we'll figure that out. And we'll talk about that maybe next week. But the trick for me to the, the challenge is uh, all of my main gear, all of my seven armor pieces and my weapons and my uh, relics are all um, uh, Thyrizian. They're all PvP gear and they're all mm -hmm. 326 PvP gear. The PvP gear only goes up to 328. So it is purple, but it only goes up to 328 purple. It does not go to 330, which uh, Master Mode Flashpoint blue, Master Mode Flashpoint gear would then be blue 330, and Kolomi Operation gear would be blue 330, uh, an opportunity to go up to, three, to blue 330, and Story Mode R4 gear um, would go up to, to uh, I think, still blue, but blue 330. Um, and then vet mode R4 would be the new sets. And there's two of those, and those would go up to 340, and they would be artifact level. So I did upgrade both of my weapons to 328 because I had enough tokens for that. I did upgrade both of my legendary implants to 332. Uh, I had enough. You know what I had? I had 30 of the old conquest crates mm -hmm. from before yep. 7.0 still stashed in one of my uh one of my cargo holds for my van i wouldn't be surprised if i have a character somewhere that still has one or two tabs of those so with with that i was able to and i was like at nine thousand when i got in today i had a few characters that i was able to complete you know that i completed conquest on is so it between all of that i had enough to get both of these upgrade uh, both of these implants upgraded once um to 332 Mm -hmm. I did upgrade, pro tip, pull your augments. I did upgrade one of my <laughs> my uh, implants before pulling the augment, and it ate, it ate the augment, of course. And you can't, I, I looked in the buyback tab, and I didn't see it in there. I think it eats it, and you can't get it back. So. Oh, yeah, Zen has a good question for you. When you were doing that Heroic 4, did you remember to use Heroic Moment and Unity? I did not those... use Heroic Moment and Unity. And in fact, the first couple times I tried, I did not even use the heal stations because in some other places in the game recently, oh, I think in Vet Mode Flashpoints, you can't use the heal stations. It says you must be in a group to use that. Um, and I, I didn't even try it until the, like my, my third try. And by then, I just wanted it to be done, so I jumped in a group and... It, and the, there was a group there and it got done really fast yeah yeah but yeah that, I, forget, I, I always forget always forget and zen always reminds everyone quite often look and they're even right down here i've got i i use heroic i use it all the time just even on just like well you should 
that's a good idea. We, I mean, we should get used to using them, uh, you know, basically, you know, quote unquote, on cooldown. If you, if you don't, you know, it's sure it's a five minute cooldown, uh, four four and a half for for Unity, but think of all the times that I could, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I could use it at least once a day when I'm log in and go do a thing. Right. I I end up just like never using it as as a result because I I go in there. And I, I wish about it. I wish there was some kind of like super awesome heal button that came along with that too. Well, it's like sometimes what the extraction bar that was one of the options too. There's a shield, uh, yes, yes, the shield, yes. the heal, I, and the stone. I, was, I did use I was those during the fight, and if we don't get those back, that was great because I it was basically a second of my responsive safeguards. On a shorter yeah. cooldown, their responsive safeguards. Yeah. So that's going to be I a was, tough if, if. But I was uh, on heroic moment. I would like for one of those abilities because so, sometimes mm. what you want to do is bring your companion back from the brink or. Yeah. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Anyways, that's what I've been doing. That's what I've been I'm up to. I'm a healer. I can, I can battle res my companion if I need to. Yeah, this fight would still be tough, though because oh no i'm not i'm not proposing that i could do yeah. this fight yeah no waves of mobs is the heart is actually the hardest for me yeah because i get behind because i can't i don't and it's six my, at a time and it's three I'm range slow i can survive for a long time but i'm slow at killing them well maybe we'll show it off uh, i i recorded my my time in there maybe we'll maybe we'll show it off at, at some point um but first let's let's talk about let's let's go ahead and talk about some uh, some news. Now, an Imperial News Network report. First up in the news, Bug Watch. I did want to go through a couple of these things in Le Bug Watch. Did I? I think I did not even put a link in here. I'll just talk through them because, I mean, putting the, the, the post up there doesn't say all that much. Two tacticals got removed. One's called Missile Backblast and one's called Sonic Heal. They were removed for 7.1. It turns out which one missile black back blast, I believe uh, it's still the recipe still in there. You can go and like go and get the recipe and go and make the make the tactical. Don't do it. Do not make it because it's going to get yanked back out of the game. That's not supposed to be in there and you will be wasting your time and resources by doing that. Uh, I did uh, like to see the, the bug report. I was uh, uh, interested to see that the SOA fight has some interesting bugs that are, are cropping back up from uh, they orig originally popped up 10 years ago and then uh, I think they came back uh, 9 years ago and then they got fixed and then I think 8 years ago um, they, they came back and then I think they, they, they got fixed and then I think 7 years ago <laughs> that is a fun one I don't know what it is a complicated set of geometry of what goes on in there during the SOA fight with all of those platforms coming down. You got to jump down. You got to jump off of them. They break. Things explode. It's a complicated bit of stressing an engine, um, but it does. It, something broke in there, which I thought was funny. Uh, uh, Explorer of Manon achievement can't be completed at the moment. Uh, that caught my eye. So if anybody is in there trying to complete that, they're going to have to do some tweaks to, to make that work and then the one that caught my eye in the other direction was uh jackie put up a thread that said hey we th we think we finally fixed completely the ruins of null darth malgus fight and i didn't see anyone at the time that i was putting these notes together that was saying no it's not fixed for me so perhaps it's completely fixed and everybody should be able to get through it at this point that would be great because that was a, a troublesome one, I know, for them to even track down and, and figure out. Um, in fact, in our, in our our interview on Behind the Games with, with Chris Schmidt, I don't know if I don't think it was on the air, but he was even then continuing to express frustration over that bug in particular. Um, so that right. And I, I thought you were going to mention the one where we talked to um, the QA engineer because... That was also germane to how 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 sometimes it's really hard to find problems, mm -hmm. the cause of something, but also ways that you can avoid getting there in the first place. 
So yeah, that'll be the behind the games that will be released uh, this weekend. Yes. Uh, which will be with Jonah Davidson, who's a QA engineer, um, working with a small indie crew right now, but able to talk about what goes on in the in the triple A's as well. We go through a lot of like day in the life of the hardcore QA engineering and what happens there and why yes. some of this stuff is yes. difficult. It was, it was fun. Good good conversation. Really really interesting. Yeah. yeah. So also this this week we got a new short story. So Caitlin Sullivan, who's one of the um, you know, the new Jedi Council, is has written a short story and it basically speaks to Sahar and her state of mind and what she's been doing between the end of the last cinematic that we had and the beginning of the story that you get today. So yeah. I mean this week. So um yeah, go read that. I don't want to say anything about it other no. than that's what it is. Yeah. 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 And it, I mean, it's, it's not, it's not critical. You're not missing it. Uh, a, right. You if know, you don't read information, it. If you, if you don't, but it's, it is a nice interlude that sort of explains but yeah, some facts. You might as well read it. I yeah. think you should read yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely should. Cause it, it does, it sort of sets the stage for what's going on with Sahar, what kind of a little bit of, a little bit of state of mind, a little bit of just the facts of what happened between uh, the end of the ruins of Null and um, the, the start of 7.1. Uh, so it's, it's kind of cool that way. Um, and she has a, she meets another character. She does. In the story. Yeah. I don't know if we'll ever hear from that character again, but um. Or did you recognize that character? I did not, but someone on the forums did. So then I oh. went and read read oh, Wikipedia right. about that character. Well, so right I don't know. I'm gonna yeah. have to. I I guess I missed that. Um, I also missed nightlife. So nightlife is back. <laughs> uh, I have not been to the casino yet, but I have been watching in detail all of the chatter going on uh, in Guild um, amongst the community on Twitter of. Some of the changes, which are looking pretty interesting, both in terms of the new rewards that you can get and also in terms of the new, is it 150 million credits for the max bet, uh, purple max bet token that you can use? I think it is. And what the betting strategies are and which is better to go after and which is not. Um, so I think some people have done some testing. I know Sortarista did some testing. And it's, you know, if you're laying down 150 million credits uh, that and it's not, you know, it's still a 50 50 chance. Uh, I have a hard time spending 150 million credits on something that I really, 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 really want. Yeah. I think that I think that the known strategy that people are talking about instead is just to to just play the regular machines. In fact, all of the the regular. uh ish machines are still have all of their rewards just in a, at a, a lower rate. But I do, but I do approve of the idea of having cost sinks like this. Yeah, sure. And fine. Credit sinks, the sink, sink those credits. That's what, uh, this is the kind of thing to, to, to have a, a credit sink around. That uh, makes a lot of sense. There will be a couple other events, though, this week, uh, this month as well. So the in-game events page is updated. Uh, the two events that are popping up this week uh, or this month are... Oh, I just lost. There we go. Uh, our Swoop Rally is coming on the 9th. Um, so that is coming up. And... Um, and then on the 23rd is Rackle. So a couple other things. And then Nightlife is, Nightlife is, <sighs> I don't know when Nightlife ends. Don't ask me. <laughs> well, that's why we we haven't gone yet, because it's not about to end. Right. Or, or already ended. I mean, I think it goes to like uh, December. Um, so I'll, I'll, right. I'll check in like, or, know, like November. Yeah. See if it's still yeah. going on. Because I'm sure it will. Yeah. Little guild and community news. You gave a little bit of a rundown, Seema. Anything else to sort of add there? Um, let me look in my my new slow way of doing things. Thanks, Windows Eleven. 
Um, no, we pretty much covered it. This is the big thing for us this week is Summer of Love. Um, and if you play any of our games, Lotro, WoW, Final Fantasy, you know, Elder Scrolls Online, there's there's events yet to come. Plus, there's D and D games going on too this week as well. One shot. Oh, so this was where we. Oops. It's queuing up some of, some of our video that we can show off tonight. That was that was our raid leader, Corley. Yes, it was. Voice anywhere. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And shout out also to the chat room, of course. Uh, really appreciate it ends the day before you visit the casino. Um, this is true. That right. that is the calculation. Right. That is that is the calculus. Well played, yes. for sure. Um, that is exactly when it ends. Um, but right now we've got the rest of the patch notes that we can take a look at because we are in the burn phase. I would say because we are all at this moment still. Power willing. will be yours if you are willing to burn. It is happening. It is going on. So we did get quite a bunch of stuff. In fact, let me bring up those those patch notes. We can we can hit it for, through the patch notes, and then I can show some of the things because I recorded all my time doing all of the dailies and recorded our at least <laughs> our a couple of our pulls, and I could show off some of the bugs from R four. Um, but we get got a lot a lot in here, and I you know kind of kind of forget and sort of breeze past a few things but 7.1 is a relatively meaty um, chunk of content especially because there's a full operation that's part of it so that's nice so we got story update um the story was about a half hour's worth of story um maybe maybe even a little bit longer if you actually if you don't space bar through it uh which is worth it to not not space bar through it uh, so that was good. You do get a little bit of a, a sort of a, a chat with Malgus as was shown in the in the pre clip in the trailer. Uh, you get R four anomaly, so you get the full operation there. The full operation is in st a story mode and a vet mode, and there's new armor sets associated with it. This is the place where it's intended for us all to be at the moment to be getting gear to try out some new content. There's kind of a little bit of a of a story associated with it uh but it's it's a, sort of a side story it's not part of the the core story of what's going on with with malgus or anything like that 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 we know so far that at least yeah. i know so far i was just gonna say i guess um, we didn't finish you know, it we haven't talked to what's your name at the end the dominator related yeah but i was gonna say related to story yeah this piece of it it's actually shows up in your alliance alerts which i did not realize yeah and wasn't expecting because when I see an alliance alert, I just kind of filed away. Oh, I don't need another companion right now. Right, right. Yeah, that was weird. You're right. It does show up in alliance alerts. I I couldn't figure out where the story part. You, you can still go to Mech Shaw and just walk right in without the story yes. as well. Yes, yes. Uh, and it's it's in the same place it was on the PTS. It's at the end of one of the piers, one of the launch piers outside of the cantina area on Mech Shaw. They did add you know, a little bit more character around it. They added a shuttle there that you're actually boarding and not just a you know just a blank window at the end, uh, which is kind of cool. I like that whole area. I like Meksha. But the reason you're there on Meksha is because you have a contact that you get to actually meet and talk to. You stumble upon a scene where someone's questioning some slimeball character that is is has been sort of selling some Zerka tech and mechs. Mex is there. Mm -hmm. You get to see Mex in person, which we have not seen before. Right. Um, Mex and... from um, Dachshund. Yeah. Yeah. And what did you say Mex looks like? Which I agree. Uh, Geralt. Mm -hmm. The Witcher. Geralt of Rivia. Um, he doesn't drop f bombs and he doesn't growl um, <laughs> as much as Geralt, but. Uh, yeah, his look is kind of Geralty. Which, and which then who did you say he looked like? Uh, I forgot who I said he looked like. You oh, said Charles. he looked like Charles. <laughs> Charles Boyd, except, except with grayish hair. But Charles is getting a little, little bit of that, uh, getting salted in as well. 
but yeah, I thought his look was a little bit like Charles. But I like the, I like the character and the voice acting of Max. Uh, <laughs> I like the banter of Duxon is just amazing. I think didn't we do a yep. whole episode just on that dialogue and the banter? I think we did. Yep. Um, we also got the Manon Daily area. And Chris Schmidt, a, by the way, said they called that the Teehees. The t- the t- there's a lot of t- Teehees in in <laughs> yeah in that dialogue yeah and and well in the whole that whole operation and that was yeah right in the in the dialogue for that specials. operation yeah 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 um uh Manon Daily area and there's a story associated with that and it's slightly different on the Imperial side and the Republic side we won't sort of get too much into that story but I liked it. I liked I liked doing it. I liked some of the characters that we were talking to. Uh, I kind of, you know, I, the Empire is doing Empire-ish stuff. They're they're like the bad guys. Empire is the bad guys, and they're they're being bad, um, just as they were at the at the whole start of the Manon story. They're continuing that. They're subverting the the the, the planet. The you know the whatever it's the Manon. The fish people, <laughs> Cellcath. They're like subverting the Cellcath, and they're they're fine with just like killing everybody, and you know they're being very uh, imperial about it. Whereas here I am, I'm the commander of the alliance. Wouldn't my first instinct be to create an alliance? Uh, and but maybe there's opportunities for for that in some some potential ways, and there there's a little little bit of that in the story, but the the main bit is you're still trying to um you know d- d- subvert the d- imp- imp- be be imperial <laughs> uh i haven't played the republic side yet so we'll see how that goes the gand who's the character that we met uh in the intro stream for 7.1 uh he seemed relatively standard imperial by the beginning and i really kind of liked him by the end um thought it was a fine character and then you do encounter uh, and then you do battle against a couple factions of Selkath, and there's the one little character that i i liked um you know you still you still fight but uh it turned out uh, to i liked my dialogue with this character and i liked how it turned out um it was pretty good so check that out and then there's all of the dailies and there's a weekly there's two heroic twos there's the heroic four um, so, and maybe we'll show a little bit of that. And then there's a bunch of dailies. You only have to do five, I think, to complete the weekly. I did them all. Uh, and I thought they were fine. I liked them all. So nothing too dramatic, but good to have it there. Uh, and then there's like the, the other stuff that's going on, which is, well, Narshadon Nightlife. So that's in. There's tweaks to a, a bunch of various things. Oh, here's something I didn't talk about. Um, that we can bring up in this section. Arsenal. So it, is Arsenal back on the menu? Boys. <laughs> Gosh. Gosh. <laughs> Arsenal is back on the menu, but barely. It's just scraping the bottom. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, and, and maybe it's not even the, the last, the lowest of the, of the specs anymore, but, I was doing a bunch of reading and doing some of my own checks. And uh, if you're not doing vet mode, uh, if you're not doing vet mode R4 or master mode operations, Arsenal is is perfectly fine and viable. If you're doing those, then Arsenal is probably not going to be too welcome. IO as a ranged spec innovative ordinance is a, a bit better and probably is fine for a middle of the pack ranged um, spec i may end up switching my spec to io as a result um, but it's not top parsing by any means hatred assassin i think is is just blowing blowing the charts away um, so, quite a bit max i just noticed that today in tour and chat says that you can get those abilities back by talking to an npc hmm. thank you thank you thank you I do want those abilities back. It's really fun to have yeah. those. And I love that co- idea that we, th- and choices matter. Yeah, it's you, a cool, you have to pick yeah, it's between cool two, three different times. I want, do you, do you get to repick them each time? I'm going to have to track this down. 
thank you for for that. I wonder, in fact, while we're in here and while we're talking about this stuff, maybe, um, what is going on? Oh, this is the video. <laughs> I was like, why is my character running around by itself? <laughs> <laughs> How come when I click, nothing happens? Oh, that was funny. <laughs> I I went over to the to the to the screen there. Uh, with with which was showing me on Manon, but but running around. All right, I will find that while we're talking. Um, but yeah, so, uh, and then some of the, some of the updates, like a couple of the tacticals got updated, um, a couple of the, the UI changes, like uh, weapons and outfit are showing up be better. The tuna. Oh, have you played anything? I played it all around with the combat style icons, changing the color of those or the customizations to subtitles. No, I, chat. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, that's don't don't forget about that, especially if you were looking forward to that. It's it's definitely a ton of customization that's available for PvPers being able to. So this is the the little icon above the character here uh, for PvPers. And where is that? I kind of now I've forgotten where it is. Interface editor? No. Preferences. Uh, preferences, nameplates, combat. Yes, preferences, nameplates, combat styles, colors is a button on the nameplates page of the preferences tab. Pop that up and you get this interface that says, here's three presets. Default, which is what they changed it to. And a lot of people then were posting on the forums saying, why did you change it? That's, that's terrible. Classic is what it used to be. Put it back to classic. Well, now you can. Um, and then a mode that changes it for a couple classifications of color blindness um, that make it a, the kind of color that that color a couple types of color blindness can definitely see and then if that's still not enough that's that if that's still not um, clear enough to, to tweak it for you you have full control rgb of the colors so here i could like take um where's my 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 merc one here um that's that's this one and I could, you know, I could make it whatever color I want, full hex, hex, sixty-four thousand colors or whatever it is. I can make a purple. I could make a white. I could make it whatever I want. Um, and you can flip back and forth. You could set it to do whatever you want. The hex code, a lot of flexibility there. Make it whatever you want. Sounds good to me. And you can do the same thing with the captions that show up on cutscenes as well. You get to choose any, uh, again, any hex code for the text color and any hex code for the shadow that shows up behind the text color, which is cool. That is cool. All right, so as- this, this kind of background work and making this kind of stuff happen or be able to happen, it takes a lot. Yeah. It's not trivial to do. Right. There's a lot of, I'm sure, a lot of rework that is, I mean, you're, you're basically stripping some, some code down and, um, needing to to take it all apart and put things back together has the opportunity to introduce a lot of bugs um it's it's uh it's potentially problematic here's the mission board i am at weekly the two heroic twos the heroic four and then one two three four five six seven seven eight eight one two three four Five, six, seven regular dailies, two heroic twos, one heroic four. The heroic twos were easy enough. I was able to just do those. Not a problem. The heroic four, as I said, probably does take a couple people. Um, but you only need to do six of any of them, six of any combination, and you complete the weekly. And remember, you can complete the weekly a couple times. Three times? I think three times. It has been three times, yeah. So, yeah, and I completed it already on this character on Tuesday. I got it again just now, and you know, so all of this is here. I picked up all of the the weekly and all of the dailies as I was doing the story and also then completed them as I was going along doing the story as well. If you want to sort of do that your first time through, you can do that and get um get the the rewards for doing the dailies is, is oh, part of that okay. too. Okay. Might as well. Good to know. Because it's all it's all right there. Mostly what you're getting as the rewards for all of this though is rep. Because if as as you notice here, there is not you're not getting like 
Um, in fact, even the weekly, it's just credits and rep is all you're getting for the doing these dailies. So they're not yeah, even I mean, giving you like um, resource matrix. I would have thought that you would get resource matrix. Is that as intended? You get, I mean, you do the weekly and you get 30,000 credits and, and rep. And well, so as soon as the rep is done, well, we'll never do these again. I mean, you should look at another daily and see if they list DRMs as the reward. I don't know. No, they don't. None of them do. No, I, no, I, I meant. Oh, regular, one that you, regular one that you, one where you know they award the, award them. Like CZ, CZ198, I know it does. Let's. Let's go there while we're talking. Okay. Um, so what'd you think? What'd you think of the whole daily area and um, So I played with it on it. the the PTS, but I haven't done it in live yet. It's um, well, I like we were it, just though. there. We were just there talking about the the artwork. Mm hmm It's yeah. You're underwater. It's a little bit dark, uh, but I, I like the, I think they did a good job with the art and the design of the different areas. Yeah, you get, you get DRMs for all yeah. of the dailies, three for each of the dailies, three for, and then 25 for the weekly in CZ198. Well, so much for that idea. And a, and a Noble Decurion chest for the, the weekly. And we're getting none of those from Anon? Is that, is that intended? Is that a, as intended? That doesn't make sense. They they must something must be broken. Uh, it gotta be. It gotta be. Otherwise, they're they, these are useless as soon as you get the rep. Well, that's frustrating. I also have not found yeah. this vendor, which gives me my um abilities. Star Saber brings up something which I also noticed. Uh, it's also non-instanced except for the heroic four at the end. Everything else is no. The one of the heroic two is also is instanced. Um, but besides those two, just the the end that you know, killing one guy in the one heroic two, and then killing the guy with his waves of ads for the heroic four. Everything else is open world, and multi tag works great. You can just you know you got to kill fifteen of these guys or whatever. Somebody else is blasting them with their lightning storm. You can throw down your death from above and tag them all as well. It it works great. Uh, I was doing it the whole time that I was out there doing the dailies and pretty happy um, to, to get that done um, that way. So cool, cool, cool. Well done in getting that set up. Um, I do love this idea, but have not found this NPC yet uh, that would give me back my... My abilities. Where are they? He says they're in one of the first hallways you go down, but not the round room with the taxis and the vendors. Okay. I see do Yes, there. multi-tag. Multi-tag. Lilo Dallas multi-tag. Uh, okay, he says it's the roadie and you... Tor today and Tora says it's the roadie and you were just standing next to right oh. after leaving the elevator. There There's no icon above them. It's Ura Jafchi, Mission Upgrades Administrator. So let's see. Oh my, now this is a real treat. Let's see if we get to choose them again. Never thought someone so important would ever need to talk to a humble little tinkerer like me. Oh, me, Topi. <laughs> I'm sure that's what's. Why would you think that? I'm very approachable. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that. Huh. Yeah, I can see that. Once you look past the armor, the blasters. <laughs> this is good dialogue. Uh, so what can I do for you? That's why you're here, right? Uh, or, oh, no. Uh, I'm not on some kind of list, am I? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to talk upgrades. Crux said you're the person for that. Um, Crux, real economical. Nothing goes to waste around here. Where do you recover equipment from the field? We turn into leftovers. Something special for you. The only catch is this stuff probably won't function anywhere else. Good. Okay. So that's what I would expect. When we're building these notebook toys, we swipe whatever tools or parts we don't have from the Cellcath. Right, because we hate the Cellcath. Most of their gear is tuned to work only on conditions found on Manon's. This is the story of why it only works here. This makes sense. 
So now you know the basics. What do you think? Are you happy with your equipment upgrades? Okay, so if you're interested in something, here we go. If you're interested in something different, I can cobble to something together for you fast. So you could then say, now that you mention it, I would like different equipment upgrades. So remember, there's two choices each for each of the three slots. Or, no, I like what I have. I'll remember that for, for later. Just give me give me what I've got. Um, keep up the good work. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, wait. But now they're not on my... They didn't show back up. Where's... You have to... I, I expected the bar to just pack up. Do you gotta... I guess you do have to say, fine, I will pick... Tell me more about yourself. I want a different equipment upgrade. You have to pick other ones. Give me the reflective shield. I want that. Okay. What else can I do for you? Um, give me the stealth generator. I want that. And give me... Um, the Colto probe. Those were the three that I liked the best. You didn't. You didn't escape, did you? Oh, maybe I did. Four. I will be going now. I'll be right here. No, I don't. I don't think I did. Oh well, they showed up that time. So maybe I did it wrong the the first time. But now they showed up. Reflective shield, Colto probe, stealth, and it's full on stealth. It stays. It's not like a temporary stealth. Uh, it's it's full stealth. Super awesome. You can have some DPS abilities instead of these. I like these the best because my rotation does all the damage that I could want it to do, uh, which is super, super cool. Uh, and I I love this reflective shield. It's basically another responsive safeguards on a shorter cooldown. It's a 40 second cooldown instead of a two minute cooldown. And then there's the Colto probe, which heals you up. Um, there's a nice little heal, uh, a hot heal over time. 17k of health over 18 seconds. Also on a 40 second cooldown. So cool. Do it. Fun. Yeah, like... that is cool. So I like having I'm probably this gonna, as an option. Probably going to go through that on the weekend. Which, when I saw this, and this is what I ex how I expected it to work, um, it did make me kind of uh, smirk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the word smirk today. Smirk is the word of the day. Uh, it made me smirk to to see that like you can just have stealth because it, it, I I wonder right, if somebody right. was sitting around going, oh <laughs> everybody's everybody's picking stealth as their second <laughs> combat style. Fine, we're just gonna we're just gonna you know we'll show you we, we could have had stealth anyway. We could get creative. Don't pick stealth. We're just gonna give you stealth. Everybody has stealth for everybody. Stealth for you, stealth for you, stealth for this, everybody. This, though, I think it's a better solution than making every other mob detect stealth. Yes, that which is the other way to, to go about nerfing the, the stealth characters. Right. Having droids which are dropping big stealth revealing circles all well, over Well, I mean, in some of the content in the story leading up to this, they're not even droids with, with like, you can see them doing that. There's characters that you just you just run by them and your your stealth drops. Right. Right, right, right. Anyways, yeah. So I like it. I like the area. My favorite part of the underwater area is uh the archaeology archaeology uh dome where you're discovering the, the temple and you gotta go down there. Um that's the the coolest area, I think. Uh, I wish they would. Sh I wish the little taxi. Now I'm like stuck on a black screen. Oh, there it popped up finally. Um, I wish the little taxi would like show you going underwater, uh, to these different areas. Same like on Mexha. I wish the taxi actually flew between the different uh, areas and zones. So here you can uh -huh. see you go through this little underwater tunnel. We're down on the bottom of the ocean. The ocean floor and then it's it's they pumped out all of the water to get down to these ruins they put a dome over it so you can look up and see the dome but the dome is is 
surrounding these ruins. So it's not just, you know, just like a big bland dome over the top of you. The like the cliffs and rocks of the ruins are are like part of the sides of the dome as well. One of the best places where we're is where we were standing at the beginning, which is this bridge, which overlooks like this deep crevasse, this deep ravine down below, which is just goes down into black depths down uh, yeah, below. That is cool. And you're you're sort of here over on the side, and you can see some of the water. Look, you can see like bubbles. Um, coming up from the side of the dome over there that's super cool and then you can look off and just see all of the artwork of of the ruins uh, that you're exploring down here just and the textures are great um, this also reminds me speaking of textures the cut scenes um, in fact I think I've got that let me go over to the video I'll try not to, to spoil the story but the cutscenes of Sahar um, and Sahar's face, uh, I, I need them to, to do that kind of um, updated textures uh, for, um, for everybody. I must have, I must, maybe I must do that. I've got to go to a different video. They really did a lot of work in updating those textures. Um, and it just looks amazing. Here we go. Oh no, here's <laughs> so here's uh Jacka is the is the dude who was doing the smuggling of uh Zerka Be careful. equipment. What's that? Try not to spoil Be careful. things. Careful. Yeah. I'm I, I, I we're no I, okay. So maybe I mean maybe this is very very minor spoilers, but this is, I just wanted to show this is Max. So here's Max. We get to actually sort of see him as a character. And yes, if if I do find Sahar, I will. We're definitely not uh, spoil the story, but I do. I had a. Okay, I'll even skip that because there are other people around her in the story. But look close when you get into that that cutscene of Sahar. The skin textures on Sahar um, and a couple of other people in that cutscene are amazing, and I want all of I want all my characters, and I want uh, you know Lana and everybody to get updated with the that new textures and and all of that. It's they it's it's definitely a generation ahead, and you can tell. Um, so cool, yeah. cool, cool. Um, but yeah, here let's look at the uh, these dailies. Um, so you do some of the dailies in the, like in the visitor center outside. My pro tip out there is to run in the fountains. Um, if you want to avoid like these droids and stuff, just run, run through the fountains, ride your speeder through the fountains and you won't aggro them. Um, th there's like a heroic two area, like half of this just, you know, basically has a bunch more elite mobs. There I go. Look, I'm running, <laughs> I'm going to run through the fountains. You do. A macro binocular. One of the dailies in involves macro binoculars. Another of the dailies involves the seeker droid. So they added those in, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, and otherwise, you know, a lot of it's just like click on the things that are on the ground, kill a bunch of dudes until you get enough of the code cylinders, yada, yada, yada. There's one additional one that you need to recover some specially refined Colto. Here's me using my my seeker droid. I'm gonna have to blow these dudes up. Uh, you have to refine some especially uh, especially uh, refined Colto, and there's a rig sitting in the Colto pool. And I think it's random what you have to do. Uh, you have to like click different buttons. You have to like lower the pressure, raise the pressure, raise the temperature, and once you do enough of the procedure, then it re refines the Colto and, and you get to, to to collect it and be done. It didn't seem like there was a timer, so there wasn't like a lot of urgency. I wasn't freaking out about it. Um, but you do have to find like where you need to click to make the machines work, uh, to, to, to discover the, ma the machines that go ping uh, and, and make it happen. Look, here's my secret droid. I found the data pad. I discovered it. Um, and I imagine that will move as well each time you do it. Look, all I got is a rep token. I'm going to 
Cap oh, and down there, once you get down to the underwater temple, is also the area where that giant deco, which we'll be able to get, um, the giant deco of the Fraxen shark head, the stone statue of this Fraxen shark head with a Colto pool inside of its mouth is that. Looks amazing. Really cool. Uh, I, I was really having fun down here. Um, one of my favorite new areas to, to sort of check out. Here's me stealthing around doing one of the heroic twos. You have to click these generator boxes. And I'm a stealth. Ha ha. <laughs> so I, I had a lot of fun with that. Okay. So these are the dailies. I'll let some of this video play while, or I'll probably switch it over, while we talk about R4. So why don't you give us the, the rundown of, of sort of what we saw in R4 to, to, to kick it off and, and what we did so far tonight. Gemma. So, I mean, I did talk about it a little bit up top, but um, so we went in there, we, we saw the first boss, which is a droid. Yes. And it's a very, it's a very um, movement oriented fight because various tiles on the floor light up with fire. They do it in a set pattern, though, so you can learn the pattern and know where to stand. But until then, you, there is time to get out of the fire because there's a. Uh, they start to light up, and you can actually detect that with your eyeballs before the fire, you know, and they is burning, burning. This is that's the thing that they explained on the on the live stream. It's. It's a more clever version of a telegraph. Instead of just having like a big circle on the ground, you'll see the flames start to ignite inside of these these square grates here. Where I am, we're about to start the fight here. Um, you can just sort of see the the grate starting to heat up, like we're seeing in this scene, and then the the flames come out. It's really kind of cool to to sort of have have something more integral to the landscape and the the scenery telegraphing what's coming next rather than just another you know circle on the ground uh, there are also big circles uh, but the circles are, are uh, both of these sets of telegraphs um, even the ones that are circles are also showing you because the inner circle is expanding to meet the outer circle when it's going to explode so you get a circle on you that's about to explode and the same thing with the big if, if you just notice with the big telegraphs for the giant laser you get the 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 full width of the of the laser and then a, a smaller width version that slowly expands outward and when it reaches the outer the, the full diameter then the effect goes off same with the circle red circles going around you when the radius expands out to the full radius of the outer circle then it explodes so you know you sort of get the timing just by sort of like watching that telegraph and then you get the the built-in scenery telegraph as well so here I'm showing yeah. the fight. Why don't you sort of dis describe what we, well, well, we evolved our strategy even while we were while we were playing. Um, so talk talk about that, so and this, then we'll talk about. So the this bugs. is so this is one this is one phase where you're DPSing the boss and staying out of fire and lasers, and then there's another phase where the boss, um, I don't know where he goes. He goes up or goes down or he goes out or whatever. But he's not a factor anymore. And there's this, this in this stage you have to kill various ads while you're clicking on consoles to remove shields. Yeah. And there's a lot of damage in this phase. Right. There's a lot of damage in the fire phase that's gonna it's gonna kind of dwindle dwindle down to nothing as we learn it. But in this phase, there's just a lot of damage from the mobs. Right. And um yeah, so and we you can see we, all the, these turrets just like blasting me as I'm standing out on the corner, and then you've got like the big droids, which are right. big, do and are these huge and they damage, have, but they have to be tanked. And they have a yes, they have a cleave, so you have to not be in front of these big droids. The yeah. boss himself, you can be on any side of him. He's a he's a sphere, and he doesn't have a cleave, but um, these guys do. So this part right here is really the most challenging for us, but we were getting it. We had a system, and we were yeah. doing it. Yeah. Um. And, and and then it just goes back to the to the first phase with the fire on the floor, but in a different pattern, 
And so it alternates between those two phases until you, I think, kill the boss. Yeah. Yeah, we we were under clicking the consoles. So in our first few attempts, if yeah. you're looking at any strategies and and reading the strategy, and that you see people saying, "Yeah, click the hell out of those consoles," that is a pro tip. Uh, you start clicking the hell out of those consoles, and the shields will drop off a lot faster. Then you can pop those droids because you can't. You need to get those shields down, or you see here the blast protocol. If the blast protocol goes off, it's a huge amount of damage to everybody in the room um, because you did not get one of the shields down and then DPS the, the, the droid under there down quick enough. But if you just click the hell out of those turrets um, until you start dropping shields and then get those those droids cleared out, you'll have extra time to go back to the to the turrets and that kind of thing. We had someone in the beginning that was calling each of the shapes out and saying, Okay, somebody click on square. You know, then somebody would click on square. Oh, click on square and circle. And then somebody would click on square and circle. Um, by the end, <laughs> by the end of the of the evening, when we were closer, and we actually uh, we're we're getting close to finishing the fight. We just ran out of time. Um, we were just like, click, 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 click. Okay, shields down. Blow, blow up the droid. Click, 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 click. Okay, we'll get another. Just go. Okay, clear, clear them out. All right, clean up the turrets. Clean up the big droids. Back on the boss. Don't stand in the I fire. Mean, and Right, and you have to kill them fast because otherwise they they kill you back. <laughs> yeah, that blast protocol will wipe the end up wiping the group. Um, so yeah, so there's there's that. Unfortunately, here I am. I didn't realize everybody was dead, um, and everything in the room was marching towards my face. Um, unfortunately, there's a few bugs. And it's not so much bugs during the fight. In fact, the fight seems pretty solid during the fight. But there's a couple annoying bugs um, before and after the fight. One is, which I don't see in this one, one is people will show up um, even after you come back and after they're res, people will uh, look like they are dead. Um, not for everybody, but for like like here in this one for me on my screen you can see here it says Seema's dead she's not and she doesn't look dead to anyone else she only looks dead to me in my raid frame shows her as dead and well she's like stealth right there i can even click on her i can hover over her and click on her and it says she's uh you know like like it says i could try to res her when i try to res her it says that person's not dead so that was annoying and then more annoying than that was we got to, oh, if you see, the other thing that's going on is um, I'm, you, you would freeze, people would freeze in their animation. So, and they, like here, you can see I'm just sort of like skating around. As, as I move, I'm just skating around back and forth. And uh, my legs aren't moving. I have no animation. That was annoying. That was annoying to me. I'm trying to record all of this stuff so that I can help submit some of these bugs. The more annoying bug, the sort of the showstopper that was preventing us from being able to get in more attempts, and we were only, only able to get in a handful of attempts, as a result is after we would kill the boss, we would, uh, we would wipe, we would return to area start, we would walk back in the room, and the boss would be sitting on the ground, um, but shielded on the ground. And if it's shielded while it's on the ground, when you come back in the room, he thinks he's in the air. He thinks he's way up high in the air, but he's not. He's on the ground with his shield. When he's in the air, when you first come in there, then he drops down and he drops his shield and you start the fight. When he's on the ground and he's shielded, he drops through the floor and disappears into space, still shoots you and kills you, and you can't kill him, and it's a problem. Uh, if you're a tank and you have an like an intercede or a leap... <laughs> And when the boss drops through the floor, if you leap to it, you also get to go out into space and be floating around in, 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 a, in like a cool space hyperspace scene. <laughs> Corley was showing us pics of that, which I thought was awesome. Um, so you, you'll see here. We'll, we'll come in here. We'll start the fight here in a second. Um, here, let me do it. So Corley is about to start the fight. And he will jump. He will, yeah, here he goes. He's going to start the fight. 
the boss, you just could sort of saw on the corner of my screen, the boss dropped through the floor. And what we all had to do to get around that is we had to exit the entrance, uh, exit the, the instance completely. It didn't happen the first couple times, you know, and the first couple of times. Some of us had to alt F4. Oh, that was another issue, is either exiting the instance or coming back into the instance, you would get to a load screen. It would get to like like 90% done with the load screen. In fact, it might, no, it worked that time. Um, look, I'm still like floating around. Um, yeah. It would get to 90% and it would hang and it would just sit there and you would have to alt F4 and come back into the game. Um, and there was no way you, to get, you could get in. And it wasn't consistent. It wasn't everybody, but everybody had to do to alt F4 at least a couple times um, when we were sort of going in and out. Um, it would just sort of get stuck, like 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 right now, it might be stuck with me coming back in, and I might have to alt F4 to restart. So there's some bugs. Now, as I said, the fight itself, if you can one-shot the fight, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have any problems. We unfortunately couldn't one-shot the fight. Um, the fight itself seemed pretty stable to me. I liked it. It seemed good. Uh, we were getting it down, um, and I think we'll we'll be able to get it through just fine, and we'll then we'll start working on the dog. Um, given that we'll at least be able to be doing that fight relatively soon, um, going back to just to sort of bring it back to the beginning as we're wrapping up here. Uh, I yeah, see, I'm stuck. I'm gonna have to alt F for it <laughs> in my video. So I was calling I was calling this story mode. I'm calling it Story Mare. Yeah. Um, Only because it, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out a way to mix story and veteran. So Vet, yeah, veteran, it is kind of tough. Veteran. And we're we're still in all, uh, almost all three twenty six gear here, but we are three twenty six. We're not three twenty. Um, but I I will I think save my ops tokens and be looking at r4 even for us for a casual team as our is what we're going to be uh going to get our 330 gear on and that's going to be our upgrade path i don't think we're going to be doing vet mode anytime soon we'll see after we get to full 330 if we feel like we can get there uh but but definitely going through story mode i think we'll be able to do it which is cool all right anything else seem on uh on any of seven one, maybe we'll we'll go into a little bit more detail on some of this in in a couple future episodes. But uh, I think that sort of is a good overview and rundown. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I I will say, if you think this fight is similar to um, oh my gosh, I can't think of his name in Dread Palace, Tyrans. Um, it's not. At yeah. first, I thought it was going to be, but it's not at all. Yeah, the other the the other corruption, the third fight in here is a little closer to Tyrans, um, but also still not. Uh, so, uh, because yeah, things aren't like things aren't like lighting up permanently and disappearing. So ty Tyrans, things were it was elimination squares going away. Um. Again. But it is kind of similar. Um, I think for, someone mentioned, maybe it was Forrester in the chat. It is. It it's in a way, it's kind of similar to that fight in um, one of the flashpoints, the last fight where the boss you get a similar kind of telegraph when keep the firing, war is keep firing. Yes, Katamimu. Yeah. Katamimu. Some of you have may have heard rumors of infiltrators <laughs> in the city. These rumors are overblown. We have it under control. Ignore the man behind the curtain. <laughs> keep firing, keep firing. Yep, that one. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy we've got seven on one. I'm happy we've got an operation. I'm happy we've got gear to go after an objective, a reason, a, a raison d'être. Uh, that was a terrible accent, a terrible pronunciation. A reason, a reason to 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 play. Um, not that we didn't have any problem making up our own reasons, um, but I like the gear. I like going after gear. Um, that's mm -hmm. a good in yeah. incentive. I'm, it gives another dimension to yeah. the to the evening. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing this for a while, which we which I think we will be. I don't think we're yes. getting another <laughs> another operation or anything <laughs> next week. 
Uh, so, well, we've, but we've got some time, and we've got a, a nice a long uh, gear grind ahead of us if we really want to get to 340 uh, gear, for example. That 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 will take that will take some work. Um, but yeah, so I think with that, uh, I think our EPC three. 434 droid is ready to go. 434 of these astromechs we've now are about to to get to to kick out an airlock and broadcast this episode out there to everybody. 430 40 34th one of them. Uh, that's sort of <laughs> Say sure that getting three up there. Times real fast. Was, yeah. Wasn't the original story that Zerka makes these astromechs for us? I think it is. Maybe it's mechs. Maybe mechs mixes mechs mixes up the astromechs. <laughs> say that 10 times uh so with that thank you all for joining us again on the 434th episode of this podcast to keep from missing out on when the 435th episode will be out subscribe subscribe on new overlords uh to new overlords on youtube and then you will also be getting the behind the games podcast new episode of that coming out this week and we've got some great ones lined up. Some great ones, some some interesting studios that you may want to hear about. Uh, our last week's episode was someone relevant to your interest, Chris Schmidt. So great one there. Subscribe to New Overlords on that. On iTunes, you can get to and subscribe to uh, this podcast, start, uh, Sword to Escape podcast, all of the links to get to the podcast and everything on, on newoverlords.com as well. We have a new Discord for the podcasts where people can jump in, ask questions. We're getting some of the creators and the people that we're interviewing in there as well. You can chat it up with them. You can get to our Discord link on newoverlords.com slash Discord. Jump in there. I'd love to see some more people in there. For the AIE Guild on Starforge and in all of the games that we play, especially this week for our summer event, you can get that at aie-guild.org. Our Discord link is in the upper right. You can jump in there. We've got a Swartor channel. You can ask for a guild invite. We would love to have anybody who's open for a casual, family-friendly guild. We want more people all the time. We get new people in that are joining every week. We really like that. So jump in there. We would love to have you. And with that, we will talk to you soon. Later, everyone. Found it. Found the button. Nice. <laughs> <laughs>